so today for our class, we are going to paint this cute little succulent. So this succulent, you can tell based off of my paintbrush, it is a pretty small succulent. You are more than welcome to make yours a little bit larger, um, especially if you have a, a larger brush. So just be aware of that today. Our succulent, the, the mantra for today is, I don't suck, I'm just learning. And no, I did not spell suck wrong, but it's short for succulent, hence the succulent here. A little pun on, on the phrase. So today's Mantra Monday is all about reminding ourselves that whatever we are currently learning at, we're not meant to be good at it yet. Learning means that we have to try things over and over and over again before we can master it. And sometimes we never do master it, and that's okay. So right now, as we're painting, I want you to think about your own art journey. Maybe your art journey is something that you're still practicing at. And maybe instead, next time, maybe if you are feeling that you're starting to get really discouraged with your painting... Remind yourself that wherever you are in your journey, you're still learning. I'm still learning on my journey. I'm, I started doing some new things today and I wasn't very good at them, but that's all part of the journey is that we get to learn what we're good at and we expand our skills that way. So we'll start with today's painting. I'm going to explain a little bit of what you need first. So I am using a five by seven inch piece of uh, watercolor paper. I am using hot pressed, meaning that it's smooth. If you have cold pressed, that's okay. Just realize that some of the small tiny details in the lettering might be a little bit more bumpy on your cold pressed paper. Then I am using, of course, my watercolors. Uh, my watercolors are from Daniel Smith, but you may use whatever kind of watercolors that you have. If you're joining us and using acrylics or oils or colored pencils or markers, that's okay too. The brush that I'm going to use tonight, as I do every single night, and if you've been here before, you'll probably get tired of me telling you this, but this is a Silver Limited. It's a, a brush called Black Velvet. It's a round size six. I love this brush because it holds enough water, but it also gets enough details. So I actually used this brush for this painting and got all those fine little details. For today's painting though, you might want to be using a smaller brush as well. So perhaps you might want to use a round size four or size two or even a size zero for some of the details. We also will be using You'll need a pencil, an eraser. I'm going to be using a kneaded eraser. Um, a towel or paper towel to blot off some of the liquid from your brush. Of course, you need water in order to do watercolors. Make sure your water is clean today because we will be using quite a bit of water. And then the last thing that we will be using, I'll give you a little time to run and get yours. I will be using a hair dryer. If you have a heat gun, that will work as well. I don't own a heat gun. Um, I usually just let things dry in between whatever else I'm doing. Some artists, though, have something called a heat gun that is not as, it doesn't blow air quite as fast. So it's not going to have any of your water or colors run. If you have a hair dryer and you want to keep up with me as I'm painting, you're more than welcome to run and grab your hair dryer. If you want to just watch and um, and hopefully yours will dry fast enough, uh, you're free to do that as well. But I will be drying in between some of these layers. All of these individual petals here, all the individual leaves of this uh, succulent, are going to they need to dry before you paint the one that's right next to it so that's why we kind of have to improvise a little bit on a live because we can't obviously delete any of the in between dry time all right so i believe that's all we need uh, we will get started so grab your paper i'm going to show you how to sketch out this succulent first 
Before we do that, we're gonna draw our lines. So grab a straight edge or a spare sheet of paper to use as a straight edge, or maybe you have a ruler. We're going to do two lines today just because there's almost too much text for just one line. So I'm gonna draw two lines at the bottom here and I'm gonna space out my wording. I don't suck on the top, comma, I'm just learning. So we'll start by writing this. We're going to write first so that we make sure we have space for the words. And we're writing suck with two C's so that we're making a play on this. I'm just learning. I had to remind myself of this this morning, actually. <clears throat> now, learning, I did do in all caps. If you like the way that that looks, you're more than welcome to also do it. I was working on QuickBooks. Ooh, wait, learning. I was working on my QuickBooks this morning, and I'm really not a good accountant. So I am still learning how to do this whole small business thing, and I was have to remind myself that I'm still learning, and I shouldn't know everything right now. Okay, so now that we're done with our lines, we're going to start with the succulent. Now, like I said... If you want to make yours bigger, um, <clears throat> feel free to do that. This is quite detailed and quite small, so <clears throat> choose your size depending on your painting level. If you're just starting with watercolors, I might suggest doing slightly bigger than the example. So I'm going to draw my line for the table, and I'm going to start by drawing the pot. So I'm going to do two angles pointing in just under this table line, a curved bottom. Actually, I kind of made that too wide. Make it a little bit skinnier. There we go. All right. Then on this pot, I actually angled in slightly. So once I come to this point here, I'm gonna angle slightly in, and then this is gonna be where my pot ends. I don't need to draw the lip on top because it's gonna be covered by all of these uh, pieces of the succulent. I can draw though this little lip line here. That's gonna be, that's this line here. And now I'm ready for the succulent itself. I'm gonna start by drawing a, a circle, and that's gonna be where <clears throat> all of my leaves of the succulent are going to stop. So I'm going to come to the base of this pot, or sorry, the top of the pot. My succulent isn't gonna to come too much further out unless you're making a succulent that's much bigger. So I'm gonna kinda try, now this doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just gonna make more or less a circle the size of these outer petals. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then the other, I'm gonna make a second circle on the inside and the second circle is going to represent where all of these petals are folding in on themselves. So here we can kind of tell that this other circle would be more or less right here. So the second little circle is going to be a little bit up from center. So it kind of almost looks like a distorted donut in a way. This is the center that I'm going to have all of my petals coming from in the center. Now I'm going to start with some of these uh, leaf shape. So I'm going to start with this one right here. So it's going to touch the very center and it's going to come down and it's kind of a teardrop shape. Don't worry if you're making your, your lines a little bit too 
dark. That's okay. We'll erase some of the darkness. Once I'm done with this center, I'm going to come to the outside two here, these two that look kind of like bananas. So there's going to be one that's coming out from this left side. And this one is going to look kind of look like a banana. All of these are pointed at the top. So it's kind of a prickly banana. And on the other side, I'm going to do the same thing. Coming out, curving towards this center point. There's my other banana. Now that I have these two bananas drawn, here, let's zoom in just a little bit. Now that I have these two side bananas drawn, now I'm going to draw the two petals on either side. I keep calling them petals, but you all know what I mean, right? So the overall shape that these, that the tips of these are making, it's looking like this, up, down, up. This is the overall shape. And that's what I'm going to be doing on either side. Up, down, up, down. Okay. Now that we have this center, I'm going to work on the lower leaves. Now these two here kind of look like they're folded in on themselves. So we're going to work on these two. I'm going to do this one on the left first. Notice that it's coming off the bottom left, coming out here, and then there's just that little tip that's showing. Okay, so we're going to draw that now. It's going to be coming off this center, coming out, and about the center of this middle leaf. Same thing, coming out. And we're going to do like a smiley face on the bottom and connect. Do you see how I did that? I know there's some pencil lines in there that shouldn't be there. That's okay. I'm going to do the same thing on this left hand side. I'm just going to reverse it. So instead, I'm going to come out, come out. Smiley face on the bottom and connect. Now remember, if yours isn't looking like this, that's okay because every single succulent in real life is going to be looking different. So it's okay if yours is looking different. All right, now that we have these two that are coming out diagonally, now we're going to work on these lower leaves. I always like to start in the center and then work my way out. So we're going to start in between each of these leaves here. In the exact center is going to come another one. So it's just like if I were to show you as the example here, if we had another leaf here, the center is where another one would come out. Okay, we're going to do the same thing in our drawing here. So from the center of both of these, another one's going to come out. And then we'll start on this left side. We'll have one coming out this way, coming back up, coming out, back in, once again. Okay, now I'm going to stop because there's going to be another one coming in here. Make this one a little bit bigger. So I did one, two, three, four on this side. I'm going to do the same on this side. So I'm going to do one out. Another one now from the center here. I'm trying my best to kind of mimic where they're coming from on this other side. But like I said, doesn't have to be perfect. So I have one in the center, two, three out. And we're pretty even as far as where we are. All right, let's look back at our reference. So we've done 
one, two, three up. So now I'm going to kind of skip these for now, these two little ones that we'll do at the end. I'll do one, two, and one. So <clears throat> I'll start at the left side here. I'm going to be drawing this one. So I'm going to come out and up. This is why we kind of did this circle here. So we kind of, we want our points of our succulent to more or less be touching the same area. All right. Sorry, that was my dog. I'm going to erase this center circle because now I don't really need that as a reference point anymore. And then from these two on the side, I'm going to do a little leaf behind. And now I'm ready to finish on top. And now I'm working down the right side. All right, so I have one that's mimicking the same in the center, then one, two coming out. And now I do have this little gap here, so I'm just gonna fill in one little here. If you see that you have any little gaps like I do, you can fill them in with any of these little tiny, tiny leaves here. All right, and that's the shape of our succulent. Now, if you have an eraser and you want to attempt to just lightly erase some of the circle around, don't worry about getting the whole thing though because we will come back and erase when everything is all dry. All right. Now, normally, if I were not showing you how to do this, if I were doing this myself at home, I would erase some of these pencil marks so they're not so dark. I'm not going to do that because I want you to be able to see. But if you're at home and your pencil marks are a little too dark, we don't want that dirtying up our water. So I'm going to create a rolling pin with my kneaded eraser. And I'm going to set it down and I'm going to roll back and forth on my drawing. And it's going to lighten up the area the, and take away some of that graphite so that we don't have so dark of pencil lines. You can do that at home. Like I said, I'm gonna leave mine like this so that you can still see what's going on. All right, I'll give you a little chance to finish this drawing. I'm gonna clean my palette and get it ready for paint. All right, I'm all set. Now we can start mixing our colors and getting them ready. So I'm using a few different colors, some of the similar colors that I've always used, like purple mixed with a little bit of brown uh, and blue mixed with a little bit of brown. We're making these dusty colors, but I'm also using a few yellows along with my greens. And if you notice that each of these tips you'll notice some magenta. So this magenta that I always use for the heart, I'm gonna be using the same magenta for the tips of the, the succulent leaves. So let's start with our purple. I'm going to add some water to my palette. And I'm going to grab, this is Carbazol Violet. It's a very vibrant violet. If yours looks just as vibrant as this does, it's kind of hard to see with the, I'll show you. I 
think that this is a pretty color, but I want mine to be a little bit more dusty. So I'm going to add some brown here from the bottom of my palette. And a little bit more brown. Add enough brown so that it just tones down some of that brightness. You see the difference? Now that I'm happy with that purple color, now I'm gonna do the blue. Same thing, a few drops of water on my palette. This is called Thalo Blue. Starts with a PTH. All right, same thing. It's a little too bright for my taste, so I'm going to add a little bit of brown. Dusty that color up a little bit. I'll check it on my paper. I think I like that color, so I'm gonna move on to mix up the next color. I am going to use a magenta. This is a quinacridone magenta, but I'm actually going to use the magenta directly from the well, so I don't actually have to mix that with anything. And for the green of the succulent, I'm using one of my favorite greens that I use all the time for botanical paintings. This is called Undersea Green. It's a green made by Daniel Smith. It has some browns in it and also some yellows, and it's a granulating color, meaning that these color pigments are separating when I paint. If you do not have a, an undersea green, you can make your own green by mixing, say, a sap, a sap green, add a little bit of brown to it to kind of muddy that color up just a little bit. It's not quite exactly the same thing, but it'll be close enough. And then I'm also going to be dropping in a color, another color by Daniel Smith called green gold. So this green gold has a very vibrant, vibrant, more of like a Hansa yellow. If you don't have this green gold, you can use, this is Hansa yellow. You can use something like a Hansa yellow and drop that color in. Um, it, it basically is just a yellow green. All right, so, oh, and then the last color that I'm gonna be adding in, I know you can't tell, but I'm also going to be using an indigo, which is a deep blue. So my indigo color looks like this. I'm gonna be dropping in just a little bit of indigo into some of these central leaves, into the innermost, so that it looks more like the shadow. If you don't have indigo already in your palette, you can mix an indigo with phthalo blue, some brown, maybe a little bit of, of purple to make it a little bit deeper of a color. <clears throat> all right, so now I'm all set to start painting. And I want to start with these leaves first because remember that we have quite a bit of wait time. Each of these leaves has to dry. So we can't have our leaves touching each other. I'm gonna show you an example with the very, very center leaf. So I'm going to start, let me come out a little bit so you can see my colors. I'm going to start with my undersea green and I'm going to paint the whole leaf with undersea green. And this whole process, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to paint first, drop in color, add water, and lift. Okay, it seems like it's kind of counterintuitive to drop colors in and then lift it up, but that's what we're gonna do. So hold tight, watch me as I do this first one, and then try your own. So I have my green already here. I'm taking some green gold, I'm gonna drop it into the center of my leaf. I have to get quite a bit of green gold in the center. And now I'm going to add water. So I'm adding a drop of water. I'm gonna clean my brush off. And even though I just added water, I'm going to lift some of that color away. 
So I'm going to lift just from the center and then drop in more water. So what is this doing? As I'm lifting the color out, it's creating a ring around the leaf, a ring of darker color. And the center, when I lift from the center, it's taking some of that color away. So all I'm doing in essence is I'm creating an outline around this leaf. Once I have this, then I'm gonna take some magenta and I'm going to touch some magenta to the tip of this leaf. So I'll kind of pick it up and show you what it looks like. Okay. Now we can't do any of the leaves that are around the outside because it is way too wet. I'm just going to drop in one more green gold. It's not quite yellow enough for me. All right. So I'm going to not do any of these leaves immediately around here. And I'm going to now go to these outer two leaves. So now that you know the process, let's try it again. So we're going to paint this outer leaf. I'm going to actually do two at once. You can do two at once. You can do three at once. Okay, let me do maybe one more. I'll do this one in the back. If you need to switch to a smaller paintbrush that has a better tip to it, that's okay. Notice that all of these leaves that I'm choosing to paint right now, they're not touching each other. All right, I'm gonna do it this way so I don't have any of the light reflecting. Okay, now that I have this base color on, now I'm going to I'm gonna drop some water in the center to push things to the outside. Okay, I'm going to dry my brush, lift some of the color from the center. Do you see how it's making this look kind of like it has more pigment on the outside? Now I want to add some of this darker indigo to this inner area and I'm going to add some of the magenta to the tips. So let's start with the magenta just because it's the easiest to see. So I'll add magenta here, magenta, magenta. Now the magenta, if your magenta is running towards the bottom of the leaf, that means that you have too much water. When I'm grabbing magenta from my well, I'm grabbing it directly from the well. And I don't have that much water on my paintbrush. Okay? Remember that if you add water, if you add a lot of water to your color, it's going to always expand. Now I'm going to add some of this indigo towards the base here. So I'm just going to touch at the base. Touch at the base. I know that it's that it's starting to come up and that's okay. Because now what I'm gonna do, maybe I'll add a little bit of yellow on the center. Now that I have my colors here, now I'm gonna add water again. And when I add water, I'm gonna add it to the center here and I want you to see what it does. So I'm just gonna add water and drop it in the center and it immediately pushes the pigment to the edges. I'm gonna add water, add water. Now I'm going to dry my brush and with a dry brush, I'm just gonna lift and push this pigment where I want it to go. Or you could, you don't have to do the lifting, you could just let it dry the way that it is. I'm gonna 
zoom out to kind of show you again what this is going to end up looking like when it's dried. It almost looks like I painted the edges there and I didn't. The edges look like they're painted, but only because we're adding these drops of water and pushing the pigment to the edges. Okay, so let's continue. It's the same thing that I'm gonna do with all of these um, petals here. So same thing, undersea green. Remember, we can't touch any of the petals we've already done, so that means I can't do any of these. I'm gonna start on some of these down below. Maybe I'll do this one here. I'll do three at a time. This one in the center. I'm gonna fill it with my base layer of undersea green. Skip one, come to this next one. All right, so same thing. I'm gonna add some magenta to the tips. Remember, I'm using magenta directly from the well. I'm not mixing it with water first. I want concentrated pigment, or otherwise it's going to expand too much. Now I'm going to add some concentrated indigo to the centers, to wherever the shadows would be. It's okay if something like this is happening, because remember we're adding water to the center. Now on this bottom one, I am gonna add some of this yellow. And now it's time to add our water. So watch what's gonna happen. We're gonna add the water to the very center, and it's gonna push it out. And then we dry off our brush and lift, add more water to push it out and lift. So basically we're doing this combination of adding water and taking it away. And what that's doing is it's taking the pigment and it's pushing it to the edges. Adding water, drying our brush, lifting, adding more water. I know it seems kind of counterintuitive at times. There probably is a better way of doing this. This is just the way that I started doing it. If it looks like yours needs any extra color, add it in, drop it in wherever you need it. All right, and it looks like maybe I can do these two here. So I'm gonna do the same thing. My undersea green. I'm just gonna be careful to not touch this next petal here. Undersea green. I'm going to add magenta to the tip. And I'm going to add indigo to the center where it's the darkest. And now adding my water. Drying my brush and lifting just in the center. And one more drop of water to finally push everything out. All right, so here's our example again. Here's what we have so far. Now, I can't really do anything else on this. Um, just gonna add a little bit more of this yellow 
to some of these areas here. All right, so since I can't really do anything else here, I'm going to move on to this purple of the pot as I do need this to dry. Now this purple, I'm going to use the purple that I just mixed and I'm just going to do a wet on dry layer just on the bottom of this pot here. I don't actually want to do the upper part because if I touch this leaf, it's going to leak into the purple. This darker shadow here, I need to wait until my purple's all dry for that. So as I'm waiting for these layers to dry, I'm going to write using Micron Pen. Let me just find the right size that I need. Sorry, it was at the other table. So I'm using a micron size 03. I'm going to write the words now while I'm letting this all dry. If you have a heat gun and you want to start drying your layers, you're more than welcome to do so. I don't suck. I'm just learning. Okay, now obviously this part up here isn't dry quite yet, so I am going to plug in my uh, hair dryer. Now if you are using a hair dryer, you are going to have to, you are going to have to use it from quite a distance away, so I'm actually going to I'm going to reverse this so that you can see. All right, so let's see if I can get this to a point that you can see. So I'm actually gonna be holding the dryer, the hair dryer up quite high. I don't want it too close to my paper or otherwise the water and the paint is going to spread in an area that I don't want it to go. I'm gonna use a high heat so it's gonna be on, well, actually I'm gonna have it on warm and low, okay? Gun, which is not a hair dryer, Sorry about that. A hair dryer it blows the air a lot faster than a heat gun. So a heat gun is going to be a lot safer when it comes to drying your watercolors. So some of these you can tell are dry already, like these at the bottom. Others are not. You can see that they're shiny. So I just have to be careful. I'm going to start doing uh, painting in the areas where it is dry and leave these to dry a little bit more. All right, same thing. This one is, this painting, like I said, it's not a difficult one. It's just very time consuming because of the layers. So, same thing, undersea green. I'm going to come in, let me do these under layers here. So undersea green first as the base. I'm going to do two or three petals at a time. So I can see those are ready. Let's see, this one in the set, very center is also ready.
All right, so now that we have those painted, we're going to drop in a concentrated magenta just at the tip. Concentrated meaning it's coming directly from the well. We're not mixing it with water. And then concentrated indigo that we're going to drop in where the shadows are, where the leaf would connect to the plant. Dry off our brush, and now we're going to drop off, drop in some water. Drop in water. Dry off your brush. And lift in the center. One more drop of water. And... There we go. All right, now I'm gonna look and see which other petals might be ready. These two on the inside I think are ready. I'm going to leave and only do this inside part. I'm not going to paint this little section. Remember we drew two of these that are kind of facing us. Since we drew these three-dimensionally, we're also going to paint them three-dimensionally. So the parts that are closest to the plant are going to be darkest. And then these we're going to paint when the center part is dry. So I'm going to grab some indigo. Remember, we're using our indigo as the shadows. I'm going to drop indigo in closest to the center of the plant and now water in the center to spread it to the outsides dry my brush and lift and more water to push it to the outsides I'm just going to add a little bit more indigo here. Kind of got lifted up entirely by the brush. All right, I think these upper two here are ready. So same thing. Undersea green. This is where it starts to get a little bit tricky if you don't have a small brush. So feel free to switch to a, lar a smaller sized brush if you need to. I'm going to do both of these at once. All right, now I'm going to once again grab quinacridone magenta straight from the well and indigo towards the center of the plant. Clean off my brush and drop in water in the very center so that it spreads it out. Dry my brush lift from the center. When we lift this color from the center, it kind of gives it a very, very eerie look, I think. All right. I'm just going to do a little bit more magenta here. All right, let's look and see which other ones are ready. I think these are ready, so I can do these now. 
You'll have to look at yours and see which are ready and which are not. Remember that you can tell how dry they are by lifting them up. Lift up your painting and tilting it a little bit to see the reflection. If you can see the reflection, I can see a reflection only on three petals, meaning that three of them are wet right now. And I'll do the one on the opposite side here. All right, same thing. Magenta at the tip. And indigo in the center. Pretty tedious doing the same thing over and over again, but kind of relaxing too. Drop of water to push it to the outside. Dry your brush and lift from the center. Dry brush, lift from the center. All right, once you've lifted from the center, you can always add a little bit of yellow to the center. Kind of give it that little, little glow. And let me look and see which other two I can do. I think I can do these two here. Well, actually, you know what? Let's do the top of the pot because these three at the base are ready. So... If you notice from my example, this top here is a little bit darker than the base. So I'm going to look at my purple and I'm just going to see if I need to add any purple, any brown, if I have to make it a little bit more concentrated. Let's test it out and see. No, I think it's actually good. All right. I'm also adding quite a bit of liquid here. I know it's going to take a little bit to dry, but that's okay. I have time. Now, since I still have that dark paint, I'm going to use a single brush stroke. I don't want to have all that much water on my brush. So I'm going to take my brush, I'm going to touch it to my towel to take off some of that liquid. And then from this left hand side, I'm going to do one stroke over and I might come down a little bit, one more. That's it. Maybe I'll just add a little touch here just to make it a little darker. All right. Now, since our base is also ready, I'm going to do the table quickly. So while my blue is still here, I did mix up some blue earlier. If you have to remix your blue, it's phthalo blue with some brown. So same thing that I usually do, I'm going to come across with one Stroke. I'm going to come up as close as I can to my pot. Come around the base. All right. And then now what I did in my reference photo is I took some extra color and along the top line, I'm just going to dot along the top 
And what that's going to do is it's going to have more pigment than along this top of the, the ridge. So it's going to be slightly darker along the top because there's just more pigment there. All right, and while I'm waiting for some of these to dry, I'm going to make my little heart. So that's quinacridone magenta with a little bit of brown. And I added my little heart right here. So I'm going to do the same thing. If you've never joined me before, I like to add these little hearts to my Mantra Monday paintings. Because for me, it reminds me that my family and friends are always there to help remind me about things like that I don't suck and I'm still learning. That's what that heart means to me, to remind myself of my family and friends. All right, so now I think we're ready to continue here. If you have to use your dryer to dry these leaves at all, feel free to do that. If you have to take a break and then come back to it tomorrow, that's okay too. I think mine are dry, so I'm going to finish them right away. I'm going to come to these outside here. Same thing, green first. And do these, this center one as well, one layer of green. I think I have, I think I'm doing it quick enough where I'm gonna do all four of these here. And this one as well. If your green layer is drying too fast, make sure that you're using quite a bit of water here. All right, now that I have that base layer painted, I'm going to go in with some very dense magenta that's straight from the well, and I'm going to just dot that in. Ooh, this magenta went all over this time. You can see how that one kind of ran. So I'm going to control that right now, dry my brush, lift some of that from spreading too far. Then I'll take some indigo. I'm going to drop indigo at the shadows here where it's connecting to the plant. And now a drop of water to push everything to the outside. And dry my brush and lift from the center. Lift from the center. Lift some paint from the center. Lift from the center. This I'm going to have to lift a little bit more because of how much it spread. And remember that I can always add a little bit of this green gold. Once I've lifted some of that pigment away, I can always dot some of that green gold in the center. And I have two more little ones left. So same thing, green gold, or sorry, undersea green. Under sea green. Little bit of magenta straight from the well at this tip here. And I'm not going to do any indigo on this one. So I'm just going to add the drop of water here and lift a little bit of color from the inside. I might add a little bit of yellow. Now eventually I might come back and I might clean this inside one up a little bit. 
you notice that these two leaves here kind of molded together. But that's only because I kind of had them, they weren't quite dry enough before I added color. So I might go back later once it's all dry. Here I, I'm telling you one thing, I'm doing the other. And that's it. That's all that's that's all for our succulent painting. So you'll want to wait until this completely dries. When it completely dries, you can use a kneaded eraser to then erase around the outside and erase around the letters. But I hope that you learned a little something today. Uh, maybe it was a new, slightly new technique to you. Maybe it's something that you've tried in the past. Um, but if anything, I want you to come away from today's class remembering that we're all here in this learning process with art, with life in general, and that you don't suck at it. You're just learning. Next week, I want to show you the Mantra Monday for next week's class. It's going to be a very similar technique. This technique of adding paint, adding water, lifting some of that color. Um, and we are going to paint a eucalyptus strand. This is kind of coming from uh, some other another painting of a eucalyptus that I made. And so we're going to use a similar technique for this one. And it says, don't forget to breathe. And I chose eucalyptus strand for this saying because eucalyptus has properties to help you breathe if you're congested. So don't forget to join us next week. And we will see you then. Have a great Monday and have a great rest of your week. Bye, everyone. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please follow me on social media, check out my website, and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel.